My mission is simple, to make you money. I'm here to level the playing field for all investors. There's always a bull market somewhere, and I promise to help you find it. Mad Money starts now. Hey, I'm Kramer. Welcome to Mad Money. Welcome to Kramer. I got a bill my friends. I'm just trying to make you a little money. My job is not just to entertain you, but to educate and teach you. So call me at 1-800-743-CBC or tweet me at Jim Kramer. August is a tricky month to begin with. And this, this one could be especially tricky because the market's getting a little too frothy for my taste. Now, what does frothy really mean beyond some sort of pejorative connotation involving over-enthusiasm. It's the day when the Dow gained 71 points, S&P backslid 0.27%, and NASDAQ declined 0.43%. This is something we need to address. First, froth is hard to define. For some, it means stocks and companies that are doing poorly keep going higher and higher, like how Bed Bath & Beyond spiked many times before the business vanished. Those spikes had no substance. They were pure froth, signposts of a market that lacks discipline. Or whenever you get a GameStop situation, a paradigm of its own, where a bunch of home gamers join forces to push up heavily shorted stocks, things get really, really, really frothy very fast. The stock went from $4 to $400 before falling off a cliff again. People who died in labor are obliterated. And it's been lasting enmity for my call to sell GameStop at $400. I'm regarded by some as the person who pierced the bogus bubble, for which I must say, I'm very proud. Those are two versions of froth, which, again, is a curse word in this business because froth means lots of people are trying to make money in a completely unsustainable way. If you want to spot froth, you need to keep an eye on the stocks that are soaring and figure out if there's anything real behind those moves or if they're phony. But before we get too negative, maybe it would pay to do a little investigating. Maybe not everything is frothy. Maybe some stocks actually deserve to trade higher. Can you imagine? Hey, maybe many of them do. Well, why don't we do it? Let me, I got an idea. Let's do this. Let's go over the 15 best performers in the Russell 1000 large cap index last month. That was the most robust or frothy of the indices to see which of these moves are froth and which actually have substance so we can draw conclusions about how dangerous this moment really is. Let's start with QuantumScape. That was the biggest winner. It was up 66%. This is a battery technology company geared toward electric vehicles. Its stock jumped because they brought in new president from Western Digital. Given that there was no other news, this one feels completely ridiculous to me. Ridiculous. QuantumScape's been losing money like crazy for years. Doesn't have any revenue. Stock's got a 22% short position. And the shorts got busted last month. My verdict, sell, sell, sell. Danger zone, Will Robinson. Okay. Fourth DEFCON one? Second, Roku. Ah, wait a second. These guys reported dramatic upside surprise because their platforms become indispensable for the big streaming networks. We got that, that number last Thursday evening, and the stock rallied 31 on Friday, ending the month up 50%. Crazy as it sounds, I actually think this move made sense. Roku had been written off as irrelevant. That was clearly wrong. Much better situation than we thought. Might even be worth buying, but I can't recommend it here because this company's losing money hand over fist. Still, plat- Roku's platform is flourishing with consumer packaged goods ads. It's incredible. I'd say here. Third best performer, Western Alliance. Now, here's a bank stock that's plunged from $71 to $26 in a three-day period in March, right after Silicon Valley Bank blew up. Western Alliance was thought to be a goner with deposits fleeing. Turns out they had genuine deposit growth this quarter. Nothing looks even remotely like a bank run. This Phoenix base, I love the idea of Phoenix, just you know, literally too. A regional bank fooled everyone, including the short sellers who bet against it. I think the stock's 42% rally last month is justified, especially when you remember it's still down huge from its highs. No froth. Same goes for number four, Zion's Bank. That's from Salt Lake City. I can't tell you how many times I heard from people, because they know I've got shows, that this bank was bleeding deposits from the eyeballs. Again, hedge funds bet against it with 11% short position. Just like Western Alliance, Zion's had actual net inflows. So even though the stock was up 42% last month, I bet it could have more room to run. No froth. Number five, Tandem Diabetics Care. Very tricky. This company just got FDA approval for what they say is the world's smallest durable automated insulin pump. 
but Tandem's had positive net income only once in the last six years. With its sales for the last three years, hmm, not so hot. Reports this Thursday stock was up 42% last month. Too frothy. Right here. Tandem. No thanks. Coinbase, the sixth best gator, up 38%, caught a break last month when a federal court ruled that cryptocurrencies sold to individuals are not securities as part of a long-running battle between the SEC and an alpha called Ripple. The ruling gave Coinbase permission to keep doing what it's been doing, which is merchandising a lot of coins. Yesterday, though, another federal judge, Judge Rakoff, powerful guy, said the exact same, said in the exact same court, by the way, said the opposite position in a different case. So this is far from settled. Tough one. Coinbase reports on Thursday, and now I want to wait, even as there is a 23% short position, enough to send the stock to the stratosphere if the numbers are good. Jury's out. Right there. Until yesterday, I would have said that SoFi, the seventh biggest gainer, was up on pure speculation that student loans would come back as a huge business. But it turns out that SoFi took in a tremendous amount of deposits when other banks were seeing deposits flee. SoFi has 6.2 million members now. We interviewed CEO Anthony Noto when the stock was at 4 bucks not that long ago and asked him point blank if he needed to issue equity if his balance sheet was in trouble. He said unhesitatingly, no. He said business was actually booming. He was right. The bears were wrong. Stock jumped 37% last month. Probably not done. No fraud. So far, the banks that have rallied deserved it. But both Pinnacle Financial and Key Corp numbers, 8 and 9, deliver weaker numbers. Weaker. Yeah, and some optimal deposits. Yet in this environment, with such negativity toward the already downtrodden regional banks, it didn't really matter. Both their stocks rallied 34 and 33 percent, respectively, last month. Might seem frothy, but in the case of Key, with that 6 percent yield, I think it should be bought. Their stocks just never should have gone where they went to. Can't be frothy. Too cheap. Right here. I think Lyft, L-Y-F-T, number 10, is going up because that is a new management that's committed to making a profit. I like CEO David Risher. He's the late, late of Amazon. And I, I think consumers want more than one ride-sharing company. Uber just reported a profitable quarter. People didn't like it, but it was. Lyft reports next week. After the stock's 33% run last month, some uh, on the backs of the shorts, I'm going to say frothy. Sorry, David. I have to say, call it like I see it. David being a reference to David Risher, who's watching the show, and I have to address that because he's one of our viewers. Number 11, Palantir. This had a terrific quarter. This is a real cybersecurity company with real customers that has real money and has real sales. Even though its stock jumped 29% in July, I bet it actually has more upside. Not frothy, even as it seems to be, because it's, you can see in the morning on that thing underneath the TV, it looks like it's always going up. That's what can I do? I think that Palantir is right here. Medium froth. Robinhood, number 12. I believe rallied not because of its new retirement program, which is what some people think, but because high-profile money manager Kathy Wood bought a ton of it before switching and being a seller and blowing out a lot of it yesterday. You know what? I think that'll take the air out of this giant money-losing stock. I was very, very nice there by saying that. And it could give up much of the 29% gain from the last month. Froth. Number 13, New Relic. Got a takeover bid for heaven's sake. Remember, that's Lou Cerny. It's an anagram. Today, totally justified its 28% gain, but now it's done. Uber non-froth. I sniffed when I saw Newell, number 14 on the list, rallied 28% in July, as this consumer products company has been a disaster for years and years. But you know what? Its new management was able to generate a huge amount of free cash flow, and it owns some terrific brands, including Sharpies, Calflon, and Rubbermaid. Plus, it's profitable. I think Newell's not frothy and can work its way higher. I can't believe I said that, but I like this management team. Finally, we've got Comerica, a story bank that actually, again, did pretty well on earnings and deposits. It rallied 27% last month, and I bet it has more upside given the fact that it's got innate earnings power. And it's got a great brand name, Anti-Froth. Amazing. The bottom line, when you look at the biggest winners in the Russell 1000 last month, I am very happy to say that the vast majority of these stocks, aside from QuantumScape and Robinhood, represent real substance. Not just thin gruel froth. Later in the show, we'll document some real froth. But these stocks, I think most are reasonable snapback stories that deserve their July gains. Amazingly, it sure seemed like froth when I went in. But when you go under the hood, it's a lot more grounded than we thought. Ian in Florida, Ian. 
Hey, Jim, big booyah from Florida. Oh, good to have you. What's going on? Oh, just living the life. And Me that's, too. A number. that's what I said this morning, last night when I was studying at 11 o'clock when I was looking at different stocks. I said, this is the life that I have chosen. Go ahead. There you go. Investor Club member as well. But. Yes. Jim, I wanted to ask you about um, Netflix. Um, what's your thoughts on Netflix? I'm long. Netflix. I, okay, I think Netflix has got this second tier that they're doing, the ad tier with a little bit of sub. That is so. First of all, I want the Netflix guys to come on because I revere them. And I'm absolutely, and I've got to tell you, I am sick and tired of them not wanting to come on because I like them so much. I think it was a good quarter. I think the stock goes higher. Let's go to Tony in Florida. Tony! Hey, Jim. Tony. Club member and will be a club member for life. Yes! I, we are doing so I much for the club. I, you can't, I got an off-site I'm running. It's 42 days of club. 42 days of club. Just kidding, but hey, good to have you. What's up? And also, it is in a world that's so friendly and knowledgeable, and they help us out with everything we need, and I want to thank, thank you. you for them. Oh, uh, thank I want you, is, um, This company is getting better each um, quarter, and I have a small position. And hopefully you'll buy a lot of stuff for your new dog. What do you think about Chewy, if I should add to it? All right, so Chewy, look, I I, I'm going to be this close to home because, you know, we lost Marley. My wife's got another dog coming. We got, you know, we got... We got Ragu. This one's going to be Tony from an Alabama kill center. Ragu Tony, get that. And I'm telling her we got to get pictures from Chewy, the new dog. She's saying, listen, we'll just go buy the usual food. I am a big believer in Chewy, and so is Ben Stoto, who has a dog by the name of Riggins, but he always says, leave Riggins out of it. So I like Chewy. Ed in New York, Ed. Hey, Jim. It's Ed in Northport. I was wondering what's going on with J&J and &Jane, the spinoff of okay, KMU. Did, okay, so KMU is now, look, they're... It, you, it's a really interesting split off where they're going to have a big buyback that comes from Kenview. Uh, but the problem with J&J, &J, as I said yesterday, is not J&J. &J. It's one of my absolute favorite companies in the world. The problem is the plaintiff's bar and their inability to be able to settle, to make it so that the people who are most needy get the money and everybody can move on. So one of the great American companies has left the portfolio and it drives me crazy because I really think J and J is fantastic. Trey in Texas, Trey. Jim, in an effort to break my dangerous habit of texting and driving, I bought a motorcycle. You did. Additionally, do you yes, wear a helmet? Do you wear a helmet? I certainly do, Jim. Okay, then you're cool. Let's go ahead. I just wanted to let you know I'm currently forming a retirement-focused bike club, the Sons of 401. Talk the to Sons us about of 401. Harley Davidson. Holy cow. How do you like that? Now, um, I think the 401 should not put Harley Davidson, well, you know, IRA. I would not recommend Harley Davidson. I'll tell you why. Because it's episodic, and I don't like episodic stocks. I like secular growth stocks. And unfortunately, Harley doesn't have it. So I'm going to have to say no to that. By the way, Ed, club member, unbelievable. Tony, club member. These guys understand that all I do is work for the club. Someone's trying to tell me I have to go faster, and I'm sick of it. Anyway, I think most of these stocks, store, uh, uh, these stories are actually reasonable. Reasonable snapbacks. Deserving. It's not really frothy. I'm not kidding. It's not. All right. Uh, we have money tonight. What do we have? We have Rockwell Automation. Now, that stock fell awfully today. If you're missing quarterly expectations, we got to get to the bottom of what happened there. And then we are continuing Shark Week. Where the heck is my shark, for heaven's sake? Shark Week. And we are going to be with Fib Queen. She's, the old, she's finally coming here to the studio. You do not want to miss it because Shark Week continues on Mad Money. And don't forget Pinterest. They report after the bell. What can we glean from the social media company report? I'm running the numbers with the company's top brass. So stay with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.